Hello Youtubers and welcome to Fun Electronics Today! In today's video I'm gonna do something that I never did in my other videos and that is to um, take a look at how I created the schematic or my thought process behind creating the schematic for uh, this panel meter. So for those of you who don't know I created another panel meter some time ago and this is a remake for that meaning that I changed something in the software and I uh, changed the um, type of display and I, I made it smaller so this is how the schematic is looking like I know that some of you are out there are actual hardware engineers and you know how um, to create a schematic but I'm addressing in this video those of you who don't know how to create something like this so let's start with the beginning this is the input block <clears throat> and it's a linear power supply it's a step down linear voltage regulator that uses the LM317 so this chip right here it's supposed to down regulate the voltage in a linear manner from the input voltage which can be up to 35 volts depending on the on the type of voltage regulator and this LM317 can be produced by multiple uh, component manufacturers and they do have differences between them but in general they they have 35 volts as input range uh, as you can see I have a serious diode here on the input and this acts like a reverse polarity protection filtering capacitor capacitors um, this large 470 microfarad capacitor electrolytic capacitor can be replaced with other capacitors as well basically anything between 100 microfarads and 470 microfarads would work here and C102 here it's the um, ceramic capacitor 100 nanofarads these ceramic capacitors um, they usually connect in parallel with electrolytic capacitors like that to filter out the higher frequencies in the um, Reg voltage regulator um, adjust pin pin number one of the LM317 uh, I have this voltage divider which is as the manufacturer specifies on the data sheet composed of a 240 ohm resistor here and another variable resistor um, connected to the ground of the system by changing the value of this uh, second resistor you basically adjust and regulate the output voltage I calculated the value of this resistor there are I mean if you don't know how to calculate it there are a um, bunch of online calculators for LM317 chips out there on the internet uh, to make this output 3.3 volts and this 3.3 volts is exactly what the microcontroller and all the other electronics are using in this circuit i have another bunch of filtering capacitors on the output of this um, power supply and that's it with this component block the second component block would be the um, um, microcontroller itself so the microcontroller is responsible for holding the software uh, taking the input uh, values from the um, things that I'm measuring with this um, device and to take decisions and of course display everything on this OLED display right here you don't see the OLED display on the schematic it's just the connector right here by the way I'm using deep trace this is a free software up to a certain number of pins um, and you can use this um, to create your 
own projects or to open this project. This is the flashing connector for the microcontroller and it comes with this uh, pull-up resistor right here. And this right here, it's an op amp, an operational amplifier. It's the LM324 and I'm only using one of the amplifiers that is inside of this package, inside of this chip. This chip comes as a quad, so it has four of them inside the package. But I don't really care about the efficiency right now because um, this chip is extremely small. Like in reality, the SMD one, it's like 10 millimeters by six millimeters or so. So it will occup occupy very um, little space on the board. So I don't really care that I'm only using one of them and I'm not being so efficient here. For those of you who don't know what an operational amplifier is, this amplifier is used to um, amplify very small voltage signals. And in my case, I'm uh, collecting some very tiny um, voltage variation on this shunt resistor. Um, I, left, I left a spare one here so it's basically just one of them i'm saying this so you wouldn't be confused about it um, and this tiny voltage variation it's being uh, passed through this resistor right here and um, inserted into the uh, op amp and this op amp it's basically going to output a signal that is proportional to the ratio between this resistor right here and this one right here. So um, in reality I use the 10k resistor here, a 1% 10k resistor for the R317 because it's easier to find a 10k resistor than a 9k resistor they are more common and now if you calculate if you calculate the um, ratio here and that is an amplification factor of 10 basically so i'm collecting a few millivolts from the um, shunt resistor this shunt resistor is basically passing through it, the entire current that I'm using at the output of my uh, panel meter. So the entire current is passing through here. This tiny voltage that I'm reading, these few millivolts that I'm reading on it, they are very proportional to the quantity, to the amount of the current that is passed through it. And the last component block is this voltage divider right here. So this voltage divider is um, consisting of um, two resistors, a 9 kilo ohm resistor and a 1 kilo ohm resistor. In reality, again, I replaced this one with a 10 a K resistor because it's easier to find and you can basically use whatever you want here if you want to replicate this design you can even use like a 500k resistor and a 50k resistor so that you lower the um, measured voltage this time you need to lower it because the input pin of the microcontroller only reads voltages up to its input voltage which is 3.3 volts so anything that exceeds 3.3 volts on the input pin here can damage the microcontroller and we don't want that so if i have a voltage of 30 volts for instance this pin right here will have only one tenth of that which is um, basically 3 volts instead of 30 volts and it's enough lowering the voltage so that I'm not damaging the pin here. And um, 
then all I need to do is the software math. So now let's recap how the schematic is working. I'm basically having an input voltage for powering the panel meter alone. And this input voltage can be different from the voltage that I'm measuring. Um, and I can achieve this by um, having two different pins um, which can be separated by removing this jumper right here. Okay, so I have separate power for the meter. If I'm measuring higher voltages, I mean higher than 6 volts, which would be the minimum limit for operating this circuit, then I can leave it as it is. But if I want to measure voltages that are um, lower than this 6 volts limit, so to go in the 0 30 volts interval, I have to remove the jumper and use a different voltage here. So just, just keep this in mind for um, future. I am basically constantly sampling the voltage here on these pins with this voltage divider. And I'm reading this voltage variation on this pin. Port 1, pin 6. And then I'm constantly measuring the current here on this shunt, passing it passing the correspondent tiny voltage through this um, op amp and then the output of this uh, op amp is being inserted into the microcontroller. So on both these pins I will read analog voltages basically and these analog voltages will need to be processed inside the processor of this microcontroller and then I will communicate with the display here and I will display the values. About the PCB, you see that I, I already created the PCB here and I ordered it for, uh, from um, PCBWay.com. They are the official sponsors of this video. And um, this is how I created it. So in Deep Trace I have this option right here of converting the schematic into PCB and uh, this can be achieved by clicking on this convert to PCB feature right here and this will self-generate a, um, a draft board and it will give me all the components, all the connections between them. And then I can drag the components around, rearrange them and uh, define some board limits according to the sizes and the surfaces of these components. And then I can go ahead and either automatically route the traces or manually route them. I will not go into details about how to follow the um, electromagnetic compatibility measures here. I um, will probably cover this in a future video. There are some rules that need to be followed there. Um, and of course, after some hours of dragging the components around and playing with them, I ended up with having this. So this is how the uh, PCB is looking like. After I have the PCB and I can really play with it and even visualize it in 3D like this, I can go ahead and order the PCB online. For this I would need the Gerber files and the Gerber files can be generated from this deep trace program also. After I have the Gerbers, I can go ahead and order the PCBs from PCBWay.com. They are the official sponsors of this video. And for my 
latest projects, I ordered PCBs from them and they supplied them very fast. They even shipped in the past to my temporary location in Papua New Guinea. So all I need to do here is um, input the um, dimensions of the board, choose number of layers, which is two in our case, and then the number of PCBs, press on code now. I was very satisfied with these guys and their PCBs are state of the art. I mean, every time I ordered from them, it was just great. It is the second day here uh, for me struggling with the software and as you can see the software is quite a mess at this point. Um, although the hardware seems to be working flawlessly I still have a lot of programming to do meaning that um, I need to add the decimal points, I need to make it less flickery here. Um, right now I have around 12 volts on the input of this thing and it's not calibrated, it's showing 20, 20 something volts. So wish me luck. By the end of this video, everything should be functional. So far, I'm really happy of how this design turned out to be. And I'm really thinking of creating a 3D printed case for it and using it with some of my designs. This thing can be calibrated from software, so you can really make it so that it displays very accurate values. Thank you very much for watching and if you liked the video, don't forget to share it on your social media, like and subscribe as always.